Hi everyone, Paul Mann here and welcome to my videos on Practical Python. In this video, we're going to learn how to code in Python using PyCryptodome encryption libraries. PyCryptodome is a fork or an evolution of PyCrypto, an earlier encryption library for Python. PyCrypto is no longer in development and had some reported security issues, but you can check it out with my previous video if you're still a bit curious. PyCryptodome brings several security enhancements to the PyCrypto library, and in our example, we're going to use it with AES, or Advanced Encryption Standard, Cypher to encrypt text. AES, of course, is only one of the ciphers that work with PyCryptodome. The libraries also work with legacy ciphers such as TripleDes and Blowfish, you can also use RSA for public key or asymmetric encryption, and we'll be doing that in videos shortly. AES, however, is very fast and secure for symmetric encryption. If you're not sure what symmetric encryption is, you can check out my video on it. It gives a super quick and simple overview. For now, symmetric encryption is encryption that uses the same key to encrypt and decrypt. It's similar to a conventional lock that just has one key. AES is a 128-bit block cipher with key lengths of 128 or 192 or 256 bits, depending on how paranoid you are about your encryption. We'll learn what all these terms actually mean before jumping into the code. The overview should be helpful in understanding block ciphers, even if you're not going to write in Python. We'll use a very simple example of AES here to begin and then build upon it. Here we have the plain text, which is the text or file that you're trying to encrypt. The plain text goes through the block cipher or algorithm, which encrypts it with your keys and gives you the encrypted cipher text. Think of the keys as the password for your encryption. Remember that AES algorithm is widely used and available to anyone, but the keys you use are the secret to unlocking the code. The plain text needs to go through the cipher in blocks of 128 bits. In most cases, you would be encrypting larger chunks of text than 128 bits, or 16 bytes, which is really just 16 ASCII characters, so there would be multiple blocks to process in sequence. The problem with this design so far is that the repeated phrases or words in plain text would give the same ciphertext. For example, if you had a phrase student username multiple times in your plain text, each instance of that phrase would produce the same ciphertext. So a good crypto analyst therefore would be able to decipher your encryption. The problem is solved with an initiation vector, which is a fixed size input, also 128 bits, to randomize the ciphertext so that even for repeated words or phrases in your plain text, the ciphertext would be different. You only need one initiation vector because for subsequent blocks the ciphertext from the previous blocks is used to random randomize the plain text. This is how cipher block chaining works. CBC is a very common mode of operation. There are others, but for simplicity we'll stick to this one in our example. Now when you decrypt, the process will be reversed. And in order to decrypt the ciphertext, you will need the ciphertext itself, the key, and the initiation vector. So these are the things to keep in mind when we're coding with PyCryptodome. So let's start coding. So to get started, we need to install the PyCryptodome library in PyCharm or your IDE. Before you install the library, at your terminal, do a pip3 list first to ensure that you do not have PyCrypto installed. There are known issues with PyCrypto and PyCryptodome, and it will pop up in weird ways, so you need to remove PyCrypto before you install PyCryptodome. To install PyCryptodome, you simply type pip3 install PyCryptodome. Takes a few minutes and the installation should be pretty seamless. From the crypto libraries, we'll import the following classes. AES is obviously the cipher, and because each block of plain text needs to be 128 bits, we need padding at the end to make sure that the last block of our text exactly is exactly 128 bits in length. This is why we need the second line for padding. Next, we're going to generate the key. Um, in our case, we'll write out the key in a 16 byte or 128 bits. You can auto generate the key, um, but as we mentioned earlier, it can be 128 bits, 192 bits, 
or 256 bits. We're going to use a 16 byte or 128 bit key here for our example. And then we're going to create the cipher. The cipher is what encrypts the message. And for the cipher, we need to select the algorithm. In our case, it's AES. And then we need to select the mode, which is CBC, um, cipher blockchaining. So we discussed that earlier. And now we're going to create a variable for our plain text. We'll convert all the text to byte format, and that's why the B is in front of it. And the good news with this is that it doesn't matter whether it's a document, a Word, Excel, or text. It's all going to be treated the same because everything is converted to bytes. So we'll create a variable for our encrypted text now and call it ciphertext. And we'll use the cipher we created earlier to encrypt the text. We'll also use the pad variable too to pad the um, the, the plain text to ensure that it fits in multiples of 128 bits. For the cipher text, we also need the AES block side. That's a variable that needs to go into the parentheses with the plain text. So this is required for the encryption. So we'll print this out here just to ensure there are no errors and looks good. For illustration purposes, I'll also print out the cipher text to show you what that looks like. So this line of gibberish here is the cipher text that we encrypted, but it also includes the padding that we needed to make sure that the um, block size of 128 bits requirement was met. So when we created the cipher, we also created an initialization vector. It was auto-generated. We could have specified one in the parentheses, but we didn't, so it was created automatically. So if we print cipher.iv, we'll see what was used. And this line here is the 128-bit initialization vector that was used to randomize the ciphertext. So that's it for, the de for encryption. Now we need to decrypt. And as I mentioned earlier, to decrypt, we need the ciphertext, the initialization vector, and the key. So we remember the key. We use the manual key, and the ciphertext is here. So we want to write both the ciphertext and the initialization vector to a file. I'm going to write them to one file. I wouldn't recommend this in production, but for convenience here, we're going to write both things to one file, and then we'll retrieve those when we go to decrypt the file. So as you can see, the file is now in my project list, and we'll go and create a new file to de decrypt the encryption that we just did. So for decryption, the, the first library will be the same. We still need the AES cipher to decrypt. We'll also need the unpadding as opposed to the padding we used the last time, because when we decrypt it, we have to unpad, take the padding away to get the original text. So we'll use the same key as we chose the last time. That's a static manual key, and that'll be in byte format. And then I'll open up a file to retrieve the initialization vector and the uh, ciphertext. So they were both saved to the same file. The initialization vector was written first, so we can pull that out by putting 16 in the parentheses, which will pull out the first 16 bytes of the file. And then we'll pull out the subsequent bytes then, which will be the ciphertext. So we'll assign these two, two variables, the IV to the initialization vector, and the ciphertext then to the, to the ciphertext. So now we're going to create a cipher to decrypt, and it's similar to what we used the last time. We need to put AES in there and the block size, but we also need to put the initialization vector in there. We can't auto-generate it. We have to use the one that we used to encrypt the data. So we have to specify this this time. So we'll put the IV in that we created the last time. The plain text then will be equal to the decrypted um, ciphertext, and also in parentheses, the unpad utility from the PyCryptodome libraries will take the padding away and just leave us with the bytes. So when we run this, we'll have the original message in byte format. Um, and if we append uh, decode to the variable, we'll get the original text message in string format. So that's it for the basics on Pi Cryptodome with AES. You can do much more with these libraries, but this video should give you a solid understanding of the main components. You can find the code used here on my GitHub site.
Don't forget to check out my other videos on encryption. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, share and subscribe. Thanks again for watching and I'll talk to you soon.